Uh, hello there. Uh, so this is Russ. I, this is a little bit different. I basically turned the mic on and started looking through the Warhammer community site at the new Kill Team um, articles um, and just started talking. Um, and at the point where someone would say, look, mate, I only asked how you were. Um, you've been talking at me for 40 minutes. No one said that. So I just kept going. Um, so I tried to edit it down. So it's probably going to be like 10 minutes. But just a, just sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. But anyway, here's my thoughts on the articles. So looking at the new data slates that we've got, just starting with the Poxwalker, um, we've obviously got a pickup action, um, which doesn't appear in the list of actions that we've already got. So it's obviously what we're seeing here are mission specific actions, as well as unique actions and the standard set of actions that they've given us um, already in a previous article. It's interesting to note that it doesn't actually within the mindless ability say how many action points the pickup action action costs uh, it just says subtract one additional ap to do so um but the pickup action isn't part of the list of actions we've been previously given which potentially means there's another list of actions out there for missions mission specific actions that hasn't been noted in the current list of actions that we've already got so it just means there's loads we still don't know really just to give a recap the actions that we've been told about, we have the list of six actions, which is normal move, which is one AP, charge, one AP, shoot, one AP, fight, one AP, fallback, two AP, and unique action various. No idea why I said all the AP after them. I'm putting the picture up. But anyway, so this is the only list we've been given. And as far as we can tell, unique action, pickup action isn't in this section because it details actions listed on operatives data cards so when we go back to the data card we can see a section of unique actions specifically for the pox walker which is empty this kind of point is compounded when we look at the dire avenger so when we look at their abilities there's nothing in unique actions but in the abilities sections there is a thing called defensive tactics and it states each time this operative performs an dot 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 Overwatch action, doesn't have the dot dot dot, no ellipses, but I'm just, you know, Overwatch action, that's another action that's not previously been mentioned, meaning that there's probably another list of actions. Overwatch action doesn't seem to imply a mission specific. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to guess what Overwatch is. It's kind of baked into 40k. Someone declares a charge, you can Overwatch. In the most recent edition of Kill Team, again, that was one of the options when someone declared a charge. Um, it's just not part of the action list that we've been given so far. So the, it does imply that there is a separate list out there with even more actions that aren't considered unique actions. Again, it's unique actions for this data slate is still blank. The other thing that this data slate does show us, which I think has been hinted at before in some of the other articles, but I'm not 100% sure, um, is in the disgustingly resilient ability. So it says each time this operative loses, or would lose a wound, sorry, roll 1d6 on a 5 plus, that wound is not lost. This operative cannot be injured. So this state injured is something that hasn't really been fully explained. Um, I think we've had a few hints at it that potentially impact um, the movement of characters, but we don't know at what stage a model or an operative, sorry, would become injured. So if their wounds character is below, if their wounds characteristic, sorry, is below half, we don't. I mean, we don't know. There's nothing being said. Or if it's another injury roll mechanic. So if they get to zero wounds, is that it? Or is it this new injury roll mechanic? Or if they go and then a medic is able to bring them back through means unknown, unique actions most likely, would they come back but be classed as injured, which would impose negatives to hit, that kind of stuff. See, the thing that's mentioned in the Custodian Guard, the Battle Scars, sort of reminds me of the Crusade system of 40k. Um, so I, I... I mean, I'm only guessing, but I kind of speculate that that will be part of the narrative side of things. Um, it'd be interesting to find out more about the Battle Scars system, but it does also mention that this operative cannot be injured. Um, again, alluding to that injured state, whether it's, again, negatives to hit after they've come back or if they are having negatives imposed if they reach a certain percentage of their total wound pool. If they get to, you know, 10% of their wound pool, probably not that. They'll probably just say half or less than half, but you get the idea. 
also mentioned in the abilities of the Custodian Guard and the Emperor's Chosen is that they're not affected by the stun critical hit rule, which, I mean, sounds amazing. So if you get hit by a critical, the, it seems like they're adding these new states, uh, which I'm not calling states, but, you know, the injured state, the stun state. I mean, I'm just throwing the word state out a lot. and It doesn't really mean anything. Um, but it's interesting to see that they're adding these new, I guess, keywords to change the characteristics on a data state, potentially. Um, so the injured role presumably having some impact on a, on a weapon skill or a move characteristic. It's a little sad that um, it's not all in one book. Um, like the original Kill Team, you had all the armies in the core book. I mean, you did have to buy... Um, supplements when elites and commanders came out and I'm not really opposed to that um, the idea of the compendium is not terrible it does mean that they can update the rules for the models without having to update all of the rules that might not necessarily change that are in the core book um, although by the way they're doing it they're not going to be changing the points cost so I don't know how what they would need to do in terms of increasing points to level things now I assume they would just redo uh, the fire teams which is an, an interesting mechanic i get what they're saying they're sort of what it seems to be is that they've got they've basically broken down the team into smaller teams i mean the equivalent they, they kind of mentioned the equivalent so, so nine of the um guardsmen standard guardsmen seems to be worth three death guard plague marines um but, so i can see it being an easy way to add new books they'll add a new book that just has um, new fire team options and these will be the elites so you can now have a fire team that exists consists of two black guard oh god i don't know the name now black guard terminators is that i think death shroud terminators i've got some the ones with the man reapers which sounds but um yeah so stuff like that oh i could see them doing um struggling to think of an elite option that shouldn't be hard i've got like a million um, yeah, I mean, Terminators in general, you can see if, if we're looking at maybe three standard Astartes makes up a fire team, which is kind of a cool idea to have three Astartes and maybe you'd have five scouts um, and like two Terminators. It'd be a nice, easy way for them to be able to add new things in an Elite's style compendium if they were adding stuff. Um, it seems like it might be a nice, I mean, nice for them. Obviously, we'll have to buy the books, um, but we would have bought them. We bought them in the last version anyway, so I don't think that much has changed, but it would be an easy way. Obviously, one fire team would be a single commander model. Um, although potentially not, because obviously you've got Astra Militarum, which had platoon commanders, it has commander options, but they were pretty rubbish. So you might have, in that scenario, you'd have like a platoon commander with retinue, which will be two other like options of scions or comms officers that will go along with them to make sure they level it out but effectively that's what they seem to be doing they're saying so if your original grey knight commander i'm going to use this as an example because he was ludicrously expensive like 120 points i'm not going to check but you know so it's he was really expensive like a brotherhood captain no knight no it's gone i again i made a few um but he was ridiculously expensive um versus any of the Astra Militarum ones, which were pretty cheap. You could get like a really decently cheap commander's option for like a platoon commander, for example, was maybe 20 points. Again, I'm not going to check. I should do. I've got it all in front of me. I'm on a computer. Um, so I guess the idea is they have to level those fire teams out or they might have to level those fire teams out. So in a commander's fire team for the Astra Militarum, you might get a platoon commander and three scions who make up a command squad for the same points as you would get. One fire team consisting of one kill team commander that's like a brotherhood knight or a knight brotherhood person. Anyway, I, I mean, it's an interesting concept. I mean, I I like the point system, but it's, it's an interesting mechanic. It's no different to the points. They're just trying to balance it so every single fire team, regardless of what's in it, is an equivalent value, which is, I mean, the same as points. I guarantee they'll have points behind it in this algorithm that's mentioned. <laughs> There'll still be points, it's just they're not showing the points now. They're just having them as fire teams. Anyway, this has been rambling. Um, yeah, 
this is the least edited thing I've done, I think. Um, indeed. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me, um, and I'll see you in the next video.